We're now going to take a look at some more complex calculations involving the mole. This is called stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is the relationship between the quantities of substances that take part in a chemical reaction. Stoichio means element, metri means measure. So we're measuring the amount of elements that are reacting in a chemical reaction. It's a lot like a recipe, so I like to begin by thinking about a simple recipe, grilled cheese sandwiches. So in a simple recipe for a grilled cheese sandwich, you need two slices of bread plus one slice of cheese to make one grilled cheese sandwich. And you can see I've converted that recipe into a chemical equation. By using this recipe, I could understand that if I wanted to make 10 sandwiches, I could figure out how much bread and cheese I would need. So if I were to make 10 sandwiches, the ratio would indicate to me that I would need 20 slices of bread and I would need 10 slices of cheese. And I could simply figure that out just by looking at what the ratio is in my recipe. Each sandwich would need two slices of bread. Each sandwich would need one slice of cheese. I could also figure out if I had a given quantity of bread or cheese. Let's say, for example, that I have 10 slices of bread. Well, this time I would know that 10 slices of bread times 2 slices of bread to 1 sandwich, I would be able to make 5 sandwiches. And so I'm using the ratio that I see in my chemical equation to start setting up conversion factors. Now you're looking at this saying this is really easy, I could do it in my head. So let's look at a more complex recipe. Imagine we have a recipe with, where we like a really cheesy sandwich. So we have two slices of bread plus three slices of cheese in this grilled cheese sandwich. And in this situation, we're curious to know if we have 18 slices of cheese available to us. So I have 18 slices of cheese. How much bread would I need? How many sandwiches could I make? So from 18 slices of cheese, I know that for every three slices of cheese, I use two slices of bread. And then I can take a look. My slices of cheese on top cancels with my slices of cheese on bottom. So I'd end up doing 18 times 2 divided by 3, and that would allow me to calculate that I need 12 slices of bread. Now let's also look at sandwiches. So 18 slices of cheese again. For three slices of cheese, I can make one sandwich. Slices of cheese on top cancel slices of cheese on the bottom. Multiplying 18 times 1 divided by 3, which is how the math would work out, allows me to calculate that this time I can make six sandwiches. So I'm using the ratio in the chemical equation, or the recipe, to set up conversion factors. And that's what we're going to do. Okay? Now, when we are looking at chemical equations, they seem a lot more complicated than a recipe like a grilled cheese sandwich. So here we have a reaction between iron and sulfur to make iron 3 sulfide. So I chose this reaction because it has the exact same ratio as our last example for a complex cheesy cheese sandwich. The balanced chemical equation 
tells me the ratio that these substances are going to react. So I need two iron to combine with three sulfurs to make one iron three sulfide compound. We could look at this as individual atoms making individual compounds, or we could look at this as a mole of substance, which is what we're going to do. So these whole numbers that we see here, these coefficients, become what we call mole ratios. Some people call them mole-mole factors. We're going to call them mole ratios. And these ratios will allow us to solve a variety of problems. I can take a look at this ratio and write them in a wide variety of ways. So I could say that two moles of iron is equal to three moles of sulfur in terms of what quantities react together. And whenever we have a relationship between two things, we can write conversion factors. So I can write this as two moles of Fe over three moles S, or I could write this as 3 moles S over 2 mole Fe. Now, notice what's really important about these conversion factors. I'm not only writing the unit, right, there's my unit, mole, but I'm also writing my substance that I'm working with. Because notice, I have a substance on top that's sulfur, in this case, and I have substance on the bottom that's iron. So if you look at the unit mole, the mole unit appears as if it'll cancel out, but what we're actually doing here is we're changing between our different substances. So it's going to be important to not only write your numbers, but also your unit and the substance that you're working with. Now again, mole ratios always use the numbers from the balanced chemical equation. Where did these numbers come from? These three and two, or two and three numbers, they came from right here, the balanced chemical equation. So let's take a look at how we would use these mole ratio to solve some problems. Remember, all we need to know is the balanced equation and one piece of information. So you're going to see me organize my problems by using the equation. So in this example, we're going to imagine that we have 0.4 moles of sulfur. Okay, That's the quantity that we know. And from that 0.4 moles of sulfur, we're going to be able to figure out how much iron we need and how much iron 3 sulfide can be made. So for our first example, we're going to take 0.4 moles of sulfur. And moles of sulfur is what I'm getting rid of, so remember that goes on the bottom. So I look at the balanced chemical equation. All right, once again, I look at the balanced equation. So if your equation is not balanced, this will give you the wrong value. Okay, so that's what I'm doing right here. The balanced equation tells me for three moles of sulfur, I react it with two moles of iron. Okay. Moles of sulfur on top cancels moles of sulfur on the bottom. I'm left with moles of iron by doing the math of 0.4 times 2 divided by 3, I end up getting a value of 0.267 moles of iron. And once again, I kept track of my substance. Okay, very, very important. Keep track of your substance, your element, your compound, your units are not enough. You need your substance. We can also use this to figure out how much iron sulf 3 sulfide can be made. So once again, 0.4 moles of sulfur. Getting rid of sulfur. Once again, look at the balanced equation. There's a 3 in front of sulfur, so 3 moles of sulfur reacts to form 1 mole of iron 
3 sulfide. So I have a different mole ratio here because I'm comparing different substances. And these numbers are not coming from any fancy place other than the chemical equation. Moles of sulfur on top cancels moles of sulfur on the bottom. Solving this problem, I would then get 0.133 moles of iron 3 sulfide produced. Different substance, which is why I had a different ratio. So mole ratios from a balanced chemical equation will allow us to convert between two different substances. And that's where we're going to start. Good luck.